Hi, I'm Jamie from Sci-Fi Vision. Thanks for talking to me. I appreciate it. I appreciate I, you. I really enjoyed the eight episodes. Um, so can you start by talking about talking about what it was that just made you think you had to do this project? Um, man, I guess it's just I love this book so much. And I felt like I'm like fanatically devoted to Butler and definitely this book. And I just wanted to like see it. I wanted to see it. I wanted to watch the show, you know, and that was really what, that's really where it started. Um, and the more I worked on it, the more I kind of felt the necessity of it in this moment. And also just like the necessity of drawing all the attention I can to Octavia Butler, because her vision was so profound and her work so captivating and entertaining and inspiring. And if anything, I just want to like bring people back to her books, you know? Yeah. Well, I want to read it now. Cause I want to know what happens. Oh, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> gotta go read it. Um, so, especially because you, you you do like the book so much, how do you kind of balance what you pulled from that versus what you added creatively to change it up? Yeah. Um, well, it all kind of stems from the same choice, which was early on in the process with the state, state's blessing. I wanted to set the show not in 1976, but in 2016. And of course, then everything else begins to get <laughs> called into question, right? Suddenly you're like, wait, she can Google things. And like, maybe she doesn't <laughs> yeah. feel okay with the man telling her to type up his manuscripts. So, um, but that being said, like every, every choice we made on top of that was, was ingrained with what we understood Octavia had either attempted once or or was thinking about and really just wanted everything to feel like an expansion. So every single thing you see that feels new is probably its roots are in the book somewhere. We have characters with entire season long arcs who are like one sentence in the book, you know, um, or some of the details we're learning about the Wayland family are kind of hinted at in between the lines um, throughout. And that's been one of the great fun things about working on this is like every time you go back to this book, there's like more and more to discover. There's so many layers inside it. Right. She wrote so many different drafts of it, so many different versions of it. Right. Now out of curiosity, you said that, was there a reason why you chose 2016 as opposed to now? Um, well, ironically enough, we actually, FX became involved in 2016. I started writing oh. this in 2016, <laughs> but, sense. but, it, but, you know, I think as we continue to work on it and develop it and the world kind of became what the world became, I began to feel like 2016 was like the last year we could all agree on what was happening, you know? And during, uh, we shot the pilot during COVID, like almost kind of just past, you know, was it peak COVID? No, I, was, I think I was vaccinated. Oh, we were vaccinated. Yeah. Um, but I remember there were a lot of conversations like, should we set this now? And I was like, I really don't need people like walking around with masks on. Like, I really just wasn't ready for that. So in some ways, it was a matter of convenience, but also just felt like right. It felt like also exactly 40 years after the setting of the original book, which felt kind of right. So that was really what was behind it. Yeah. That makes sense. So can you talk about some of the big changes specifically that you did make and why? I know, I know you added Olivia. I know that was one of them. Can you talk about that and some of the mm -hmm. other things? Um. Let's see, like, uh, like, a, well, there's only maybe three big changes, including 2016. One is that Olivia exists, um, who is this character we learn that is Dana's mother, right? I think in the book, Dana is an orphan, but we learn that she's not exactly an orphan. And I thought this was an opportunity to, like, really deepen our understanding of Dana, you know, her... Um, you know, familiar. The, sh the show is called Kindred. You know, it feels like yeah. it's about how familial relationships ultimately shape our sense of self. And I want to just give her more ways to be shaped and more dimension in some way. Um, I also thought it was an opportunity to like honor the fact that this book is 45 years old and a lot has happened since then. A lot of social mores have evolved. Our understanding of the time periods evolved. And I wanted to like, let there be room for kind of intergenerational conflicts and tensions and conversations mm -hmm. and really account for, you know, the fullness of, uh, American life, you know, from old to young, in addition to black and white, male and female, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, and the other big change, I guess, is that Kevin, controversially, who is uh, married to Dana in the book, is not married to Dana in our show. Um, and we've been calling it, we've been jokingly calling it a situationship. But I think I was really interested in trying to tell their love story in present tense, as opposed to in the book where you get it sort of retrospectively in these flashbacks. You know, I wanted to see if we can, how far of a relationship we can get down the road with, with these two um, if it unfolded in front of us. Right. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing I wanted to ask is how, I mean, obviously this comes from the book. So some of that's kind of already done for you, but 
how do you balance kind of what part you you used that was the historical versus the sci-fi to make sure you don't get so far off from that? Mm. How did you kind of find that balance? The sci-fi meaning like the present tense the stuff? Time, like the time travel and that kind oh, of thing. Oh, yeah. Um, well, we just sort of honestly took the cue from the book. I mean, if you, if you read the book, you'll see that, you know, so the longer, the only way that she can come back to the present is if she fears for her life. But the longer she stays in the past, the less she fears for her life. And it becomes a kind of paradox for her of like how to get home. And you really feel the past begin to eat the present. And I was really interested in sort of manipulating some version of that in our storytelling. You know, that you, I think the most we spend in Los Angeles is probably the pilot, honestly. You know, um, that's not true. That's not true. Our fourth episode is also in the present tense. But um, I just wanted to make sure you felt those stakes. You know, you felt someone's. Um, the cost of kind of getting too used to history could be that you never right. leave it, you know, you never leave it behind. Right, right. Do you have a favorite scene that you can tease without telling too much? Oh man, my favorite scene. Um, hmm. I mean, there's a really, <laughs> I have a real soft spot for these neighbors in the, in the present tense. And oh. I kind of always enjoy the ways they kind of insert themselves into the story. Um, there's a particularly insane scene that takes place on Dana's lawn in the fourth episode after they've tangled with the neighbors for a bit too much. Um, <laughs> and then there is some pretty iconic for me scenes from the book that we basically tried to create word for word. There's a scene, I think, in the second episode where Dana is reading to Rufus and his mother walks in and kind of um, becomes Not a little happy. nattering. Yeah, exactly. Um, and we tried to like basically recreate what was one of my favorite books, my favorite scenes from the book in that moment. Yeah. Th those neighbors are a little crazy too. <laughs> they <laughs> are. Thing I was gonna say. <laughs> it's really not, bad. not great people to have for neighbors. Anyway. No, not at all. Not at all. Or, or will they be? We'll find out. Stay tuned. Oh, yeah, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you for your time. Thank I appreciate you. it. I hope you get a season two because I, I know it's different from the book too. So I do want to know how it goes. Oh, thank you so much. Me too. Tell your friends. All right. All right. <laughs> All right.